you, knows your name. Hallelujah. He formed you. And as he has begun with you, he will end with you. Don't be discouraged. Be strong and look to him. The Bible says that looking unto Jesus, not looking unto the situation, not looking unto what is surrounding you, looking unto Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the beginning and the end of our life. And so long as he is on the throne, it is well. It is well. The Bible says what even Satan meant for evil, God will turn it around for our good. Don't be discouraged because he is the Lord of all laws, the king of all to God for sending his servant, the man of God, Apostle George Hooper, on our way. God has a word for you and for me. I want you to prepare your heart, open your heart, and receive what God has for you. And the Bible says, faith comes by hearing the word. And as we hear the word, and we put the word to work, we will see the result. So we want to welcome the man of God, Apostle George Hooper, as he gives us the word. Let's receive him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for another wonderful time that we are in your presence to receive. We ask for open heavens. We ask for understanding inside. We ask for utterance. We also pray that, Lord, your word has it come. Let it come in the might of the Spirit. Amen. That, Lord, we will receive life. Amen. Because the letter kills the, the Spirit that given life. We pray that give life to your word Amen. as it come to us. Minister to us as we declare open heavens also to receive. We also bring on a suggestion every manipulation activities of the evil one in jesus name we pray that your people will receive blessings of, of food this morning in jesus name thank you father thank you for hearing us in jesus name amen, amen. hallelujah we're going to look at something quickly from the word i want to teach a little this one because i have a lot of scriptures that we're going to read on the subject ministering to the Lord. This week the Lord was just ministering to me and uh, while, while I was, I was, I had a paper on me and then I started putting everything down before I came to put everything in place. Because sometimes 
God ministers me in diverse places. As sometimes I walk and begin to meditate, I receive ministration. And I thank God for what the Lord gave me. I know that it's something that we need today because it has been a blessing to me. And I know that people, some people know it and some people do not know it. The Bible says the lack of knowledge my people perish. But when we receive knowledge, it helps us to advance. And anytime we put knowledge in practice, it opens the doors of blessing unto us. Your knowledge is power. It is key to a lot of things. Hallelujah. So I want to talk on the theme, ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Ministering to the Lord. When we look into the word of God, we see that David was a man that God said, he is a man of my own heart. Hallelujah. A man of my choice. A man that I sought, I searched for him, and this is the one that I'm, I'm looking for. But David had a heart to serve God. David was not a perfect man, though he had some flaws in his life, but he had a heart for God. That whatever was for God, he made sure that he did it. That's why he established a place where he employed um, Levites who would praise and worship God 24 hours. This, uh, uh, what do you call this ship will go and praise, go another ship will continuously. So, uh, the psalmist said that praise awaits you in heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Zion. So, in Zion, sorry. So, David established something that he ministered to the Lord. And anytime we begin to minister to the Lord, God becomes happy. Hallelujah. God is pleased because that's why God made us. So, I want to read from Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Ministering to the Lord. Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. It says that now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and uh, Simon that was called Nigger and uh, Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen which had been brought up with Herod the Tetra and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Hallelujah. This um, prophet, we know a little bit about Antioch, where the believers um, were there. A lot of things happened in Antioch. And this is one of the places that these people, prophets, teachers, and other people gathered together and were waiting on the Lord. The Bible says they were ministering, they were worshiping the Lord. Most of the time, when you want to talk about ministering the Lord, our minds go to the only area of worship. Hallelujah. And this one of the things that these people were doing. And Paul was there, or Saul was there. And in the course of ministration, as they waited on the Lord, the Bible says that it was coupled with fasting. Amen. So anytime we go before the Lord with fasting, there are a lot of things that God reveals to us. But well, most of the time, our prayer life, Bible says we should pray without ceasing. So there are some people, many people go to pray and then they don't even give room where they can even hear from God. Hallelujah. We are always talking to God and we need to give time for God to talk back to us. Sometimes God wants to give us some direction. He wants to show us some things to do with what we are asking, but because we don't have time. So there are times that God himself will just capture us in dream. He will come there, open our ears, as Job said, and then he will speak to us and say, this is what I want you to do, so that you get through or break through. So when we minister to the Lord, it opens doors for divine direction. It opens doors for great, great, great blessings. And I want us to share different ways of ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you want to talk about the word ministering or minister to the Lord, as I see in the Greek word that gave uh, this thing, uh, letoregio, letoregio, it says that to be a public servant, to perform a charitable or religious function, worship, obey, relieve, Hallelujah. This is the, uh, what you call the meaning or the 
what this um, implies when it comes to, to minister, that is uh, to worship, is one part of it. That is the area that most um, believers in the body of Christ have concentrated in the area of only worshiping the Lord that we say minister. But here he say obey. He's also talked about obedience, obey, and then relief. Relief talk about where we send help. Hallelujah. Maybe they say there's um, crisis here and there. We are able to gather some money, gather some things, food items, and we go there to relieve them. Send aid. Hallelujah. So all these things talks about ministry. Ministry. So when you want to minister to the Lord, it's in diverse um, uh, ways that we can. So in the book of Acts, we see that ministering, another area of ministry that we saw, we have two major types of ministry. Ministry in the Word and ministry on tables. When there were confusion in the church at that time, it came to pass that when the disciples saw that uh, uh, things that were going on, they decided to select people. Let me read it quickly from Acts chapter 6, 1 to 4, so that we can get a complete picture. It says that, And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason uh, that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. So we saw that out of this confusion, God gave them wisdom. God gave the apostles wisdom that in the area of the ministry, they have to choose the area to minister in word and in prayer. Whilst other people um, ministered in the physical things. Hallelujah. Because if they were to put, supposed to put the things together, it will be so much for them that the word of the Lord will be hindered. And when they uh, did it, selected honest men who took that job upon themselves to do, the word of God increased. Hallelujah. The word of God increased. That is why sometimes uh, it is good, especially when it gets to some um, organizations, they make sure that those that are called by God uh, giving more room and time for the word. Because when the word of God and prayer takes place, a lot of things happen. Many people want to see miracles and other things. Yes, every pressure will be given on those, the leadership, where they wouldn't even have time. So when it happens, they see other people, they want to enjoy their ministry, whilst they, they also have, um, what do you call it, vessels who can uh, wait on the Lord to be able to give or offer similar um, grace unto them. Amen. So when it comes to ministry, anytime we also obey the ordinances of God, we also minister unto God. Hallelujah. Ordinances talks about God, the things that God has set up. When we begin to obey the Lord, when we begin to do it according to God's standard, we minister unto the Lord. As we go on, you will understand. And I want us to also look at another area where Paul was also encouraging the Roman church at that time concerning the various gifting that they had, that they use it to uh, the glory of the Lord in the church. Because if we want to talk about the church, things about the church is for the Lord. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, let me read from Romans chapter 12, 6 to 8. It says that, Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So Paul made us understand that in the body of Christ or in the church, there are people with different diverse of giftings 
which when it is being used is a way of ministry. Sometimes, though you are ministering to men, but you are ministering to God. Hallelujah. Anything, as the Lord gave you understanding, anything that we do for the kingdom, it is ministering to the Lord. Whether physical, whether serving tables, it's unto the Lord. And as we go into the word of God, we will see. So he was encouraging them that if you are a teacher, be on your area and continue to teach. If you are uh, a, 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 somebody who exhorts, keep on exhorting people. Encourage them, strengthen them, because sometimes some people might be down. So God gives you a particular gift that as you begin to share maybe one or two words, they are lifted. That is why in the body of Christ we have preachers, we have teachers, we have all kinds of gifting. Some people come and preach to excite, what do you call it? excite the people. The people will shout hallelujah and all those. It's just to encourage them. And we have people who are gifted as teachers who will teach the people. But when it comes to teaching, teaching gets deeper into the word of God, which helps the people to be able to uh, be stable or to be able to stand, build themselves on the good foundation and move on. But some of the word of encouragement is just like... Um, you take uh, what you call it, how, if somebody is not well, they give you what? Painkiller. Painkiller will just um, let the pain go, but it doesn't deal with the issue. But sometimes when you are giving some injections and operations are taking place, they root out the pain. So teachings and um, some of the preaching bring people to a, a state that they become stable. So when you go to churches that always receive only exhortations and other things, these people are the people who are, uh, we call surface Christians. They are not deep. So anything can blow them away. When they hear about anything, they chase after. These are the people who always be chasing after miracles and other things. But when people are rooted in the Word, they know that it's the Word that brings the miracles. So they are not people that you can convince that, oh, chasing after miracles here, so they go after. And we are in a time that people are doing many, many things. <clears throat> through false miracles, through the work of the devil. So when you are not rooted in the way, you can easily be deceived. Hallelujah. Especially when you chase after miracles. But when you are rooted in the word of God, and then you know what the word of God says, you will not chase after miracles because the Bible says that the, when they begin to preach the word, miracles follow them. It is not you have to chase for the miracle have to follow you. That's how it is. Hallelujah. So Paul was encouraging Everyone, if you are a ruler or a minister or a leader in the church, according to your gifting, serve with it to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So when we look into the word of God, that is what God was saying. So let us look at ministering to God's servant. Joshua ministered unto Moses. When we look into the word of God, we see that the Bible says that Joshua was Moses' age. Anywhere that Moses went, Joshua was there. And when Moses died, the Lord, who knows everything, well, when God will promote people who are serving, who are serving. So from Joshua chapter 1, 1 and 2 said, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I give to them, even to the children of Israel. So we see that Moses, oh sorry, Joshua, when he was serving Moses all along, it was like, though he was a servant, but God was using that service to train him into leadership. So when Moses was no more, the Lord said, and now arise. Because he saw wherever Moses went, when he went to the presence of the Lord on the mountain, if you do 40 days, Joshua will sit at down at the bottom part of the mountain to wait till he comes and you go with him. So God saw his heart and then gave him the mantle to lead his people. And in his time, we look at, when you look at the history or the story about the children of Israel, during the time of Moses, there were a lot of rebellious people. People were still naked and they were not ready to go by what Moses would say. But when it came to Joshua's time, Joshua's leadership was extraordinary. And the people even 
um, encourage Joshua that anybody who will not obey him, they will kill that person. So it was um, total force to obey, whether you like it or not. And because of that, they were able to possess the land. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let us be awake and active. Hallelujah. We rebuke the spirit of sleep and slumber. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anytime the word of God is coming, the enemy will distract us not to receive what it is there. So let us be aware. Let us be vigilant. The Bible says that Satan comes as a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he used all kinds of strategies just to make us miss most of the blessings that God has for us. Hallelujah. So Joshua became uh, the leader of, uh, what do you call it, um, Israel. Who, who, who he led them to possess the promised land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So another area also we see is um, Elisha, who ministered to Elijah. So during the time that he was working with him, serving him, God was also preparing him to take the mantle. Hallelujah. He, in his mind, probably that was not what was there, but before Elijah was taken, he asked him what he wanted, and he told him that he wanted double portion of his anointing. So that is what happened. So when it comes to ministering, we might minister to people that we know, but we are not ministering to them. In the, on the other way around, we are ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why sometimes people miss it when they are doing something for God. Because they think they are doing it for men. So when it comes to that area, they begin to grumble, mama, bluff, and all those kind of things. And they don't know that they are missing great blessings. Because there's no one who wants to do something for the Lord that you will not receive a reward. Hallelujah. So, in the church, for example, when a person uh, ministers as a choir in the usher or as a cleaner or in leadership, he is ministering to the Lord. Because the Bible says that I will build my church. The church is for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Everything that is going on in the church is unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It's unto the Lord. It is not to the pastor. It is not to the leadership. So some people will look at the leadership, and when they look at them, they begin to say that, oh, because of this, I'm not going to church, but the church doesn't belong to them. Hallelujah. The church, the builder of the church and the owner is the Lord Jesus Christ. So any service that we give in, in it, we are doing it for the Lord. If you are maybe playing the music or something. You are not doing it for man or doing it in the name of that ministry, but you are doing it unto the Lord Jesus. If that ministry is a genuine one that belongs to God, that means that you are doing it for the Lord. So anything that you are doing, if you are a cleaner, sweeping the house of God, putting things in order, you are ministering to the Lord, and great will be your reward. People have ministered as ushers, and God has elevated them from that level to become ministers of God, pastors and apostles and so on. So, in it, most of the time, when God is selecting people or choosing people into position, He takes people who are in service. All the disciples that He took uh, or He chose them, they were people who were hardworking. He did not take lazy people who were not doing anything and call them. All those who were hard workers, Peter and Paul were fishermen. They went to fishing, they didn't catch anything, and they were washing their nets. It, it was a very hard task job at that time. And he came and told them that, put down those nets and said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of it. He knew that there were people who ex were experienced, they had knowledge. So when we are hard workers and also give our strength and our time and other things for the service of the Lord, we minister to him and then God blesses us. So when it comes to ministering to the Lord, it's not only worship, which many people have um, um, programmed their mind that, oh, as a minister, I, I worship that being I'm only ministering to the Lord. That is part of it. But if you are a cleaner, as you are cleaning the house of God, you are ministering to the Lord. If you are doing ushering, putting people to have the particular seating position and everything, you are ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us look at the story about Mary and Martha. This is one of the particular points that I want us to um, do what? Get the picture of hallelujah. From the book of uh, Luke chapter 10, Luke 10, text 8, to 42. He says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha 
received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was comforted about my serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing that is needful, and Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. I like that story very much. It's very, very powerful. Hallelujah. It's really very, very powerful. So, when we look at it, many people look at Martha to be Makana and looking at Mary to be more spiritual because Martha was all the time concerned about the welfare of Jesus Christ, how he would eat and drink and other things, which was very good. But Mary, her own was that when Jesus came, she will come and then sit down, leave everything that she was doing to come and listen to the word of God. Hallelujah. So when Martha was um, complaining that the Mary will not come and help her to do the job and has left everything, it happened that um, Jesus told her that she is so much concerned about many, many things. But one thing that Mary has taken or chosen and cannot be taken from her, that is really needful. And that's the word of God. Because Jesus is the word. He came to give us the word. And we need the word of God to help us to be able to live this life that we are living on earth. Hallelujah. We need that word of God. Because as we are on earth, he takes the word. Because the Bible says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. So that is what we need to help us be able to maneuver our way, to be successful, to be fruitful, and to be able to do uh, what God has ordained us to do. It is the word of God. And Mary chose that word, hallelujah, to make sure that he would, she wouldn't miss any opportunity when Jesus passed by. Because Jesus was the, uh, the greatest teacher. So when the greatest teacher has come to your house, what will you do? You don't have to... Um, allow things to distract you. So Jesus told her that Mary has chosen the best part because the ministration that was coming was very powerful because the word of God can bring healing, the word of God can bring prosperity, the word of God can bring success. Hallelujah. It can bring anything because there is power in the word. The word can bring transformation. And Mary chose it while Martha was missing those things. Hallelujah. So Martha was supposed to be able to graft it, but that doesn't mean that what the job that Martha was doing was not important. Hallelujah. So when we look into the word of God, it says that um, Mary, <clears throat> Mary received the word, and Martha was doing the, what do you call it, the physical part, that is the charitable area. But as we go through the, some of the scripture that we're going to read, we will see that when it comes to the day that we get to heaven, one of the different things that we're going to see is that Martha is going to have mansions in heaven while Mary will not have anything. Are you getting me? Because if a person doesn't give, the Bible says that we should do what? Invest in heaven. And what Martha was doing was a great investment. The only thing is that it, she was missing the word that will help her on earth. But in heaven, Martha was really accumulating things. Whenever we talk about people having mansions and other things, it, they are people who are givers. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that our treasure should be uh, invested in heaven. Martha was investing her time was investing her resources to feed the Lord. She was ministering to the Lord. And then Mary was being ministered, ministered to. Look at the difference. And, and there's a scripture that says that it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
Mary was only receiving, he was a recipient. While Martha was human, giving. So who, who received more blessings? Who is receiving more blessings? It is Martha. Hallelujah. But Martha is giving out. Jesus himself said it, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Though, when, it, when we have time for everything, in that period, the best time was to receive from the word, but the word has come. And Jesus was not all the time in the place, but he came in particular times to refresh himself. Are you getting the picture over here? So none of them missed something, but the one who would get more blessing in heaven was Martha. Well, Martha was human, giving. She was giving, while Mary was receiving. You get it? Hallelujah. So this is where we understand that though Mary chose the best part, that was the word, we saw that Martha was also having something else. Amen. So all of them were doing great things. Martha was ministering to the Lord as we are talking about ministering to the Lord. But that's what the Lord is requiring. But because we have time for everything, when it comes the time of receiving, we have to give room, time to receive. But the, the time for Mary, uh, Mary and Martha to receive, while well, Martha was very busy, hallelujah. But when it comes to rewarding or reward, it is Martha who is going to get a reward, while well, Mary will get the way inside, amen. So there are two different things here all together. So when we look at God's also original plan, I want us to look at a lot of areas in the area of this world. Anything that God has ordained, when we obey it, when we do it, we are ministering to the Lord. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, 18, it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a help meet for him. He said, a help meet for him. Most of the time, we put the help me together to make it one way. We say help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But say he'll make him and help meet for him. Somebody who will help him. So the Bible says God created um, um, a, a woman or he made Adam to sleep when we read on. And then from Adam's side, he removed one rib and then created a woman or made a woman. Gave her to Adam. And then they lived together. So we see that Adam had a help, and the help is more or less like an aid, somebody who comes to assist, who comes to help. But when you look at the modern days, things are getting the other way around. The, the one that is coming to help rather comes to take over and makes the one who's supposed to take the lead become like a child. And everything that we see is going the other way around, which needs a reverser. So that we have to make sure that the word of God goes the way it goes. So I most of the time appreciate, as I was preparing this message and I was seeing back our, our parents, what you call our forefathers and those who didn't have knowledge that we have today. The little that they had, they knew that, especially when it comes to the side of the women, they knew that they were help me for the man. So they gave their all as matter gave. They give their best. They, they know that that is what God has created them for. So when it comes to marriage, they never complained. They will serve and serve and do everything. And those who are born again, I begin to picture the great blessing that they are going to have in heaven. That blessing that it will be great. Because they did all with their heart. But we have come to a modern time that the gospel has been polluted. Where somebody who can say that, Oh, we are all doing the working together and all those things. So even the housework, we have to divide it into two. 50-50, uh, this one will do this, this one will do that. Forgetting that, that service alone carries great blessing. But the Bible says that any ordinance that is ordained, that when we obey it, we receive great blessings. Hallelujah. We receive great So in obedience to what God has put down, it is like you are in a church, you are an usher, you are a cleaner. You know that your part is to come and clean the house of God. Whether they pay you or you don't pay you, you, you don't care about it. You still do it because you know that you are not doing it for man. Hallelujah. You are doing it for them. The same thing that when it comes to the marriage circles, whatever maybe the wife does, though the, the person that is serving the husband 
you are not doing it for the husband, you are doing it for the Lord. Because God has set that ordinance there. Hallelujah. But people look on the other way around and begin to see that sometimes some of them will complain that even I'm being cheated, um, I, I don't receive this, I don't receive that. Forgetting ministering to the Lord because whatever is being done is ministering to the Lord. As you minister to the husband, even if it's not a minister of God, you are ministering to the Lord because you are obeying what the word of God has said. So when a person is serving, especially somebody who is called by God, like Elijah and co, or a pastor or somebody, and you are a wife today, uh, that minister, there, there's great, a lot of great respons responsibility over there where you have to give him more. There are a lot of things that you have to, but the, the rewards that are behind is very great. Many people, even on earth, God elevates them so great to a level, very, very high, just almost like even close to the, the man of God himself because of opening their heart to serve. But the, those who complain, those who don't do anything, they, because they look at it like they are doing it for man. So they don't receive any reward. That is what happens. So when it comes to ministering to the Lord, as you minister to your husband, you are not ministering to your husband. You are ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. We have only shifted our eyes that when we lift our hands in worship, it's only the time that we are ministering to the Lord. But as we go through the word once again, we will also understand many, many things. So let us look at the hierarchy here. From 1 Corinthians 11, 3, it says that, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So when the woman offers aid to the man, in, a, in his ordained vision, she is ministering to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a ministration to the Lord. That is where we see, for example, when you look at the virtuous woman, the Bible makes us understand that she has a very high price. That it's very hard to find people like that, because she was somebody who went to the extra mile to be able to offer because all those services that she was doing was doing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why um, she, uh, many, many things has been written about her as an example even to encourage our um, women or our wives today. For not every woman is a wife. Hallelujah. To encourage wives today so that they will be able to emulate her services or her um, what she did, her example, and then be able to get to a level where they, they can also be praised. Hallelujah. So our mothers who were illiterate, who didn't know anything, are going to be so much blessed to the extent that when we get there, it will surprise us that, ah, but this person who, did, who didn't know it, look at the blessing that they are having or acquired because of their submissiveness and then the obedience to their, their husband. Everything that we were doing, it was unto the law. Hallelujah. Though you do it to man, physically as you see, but it is to the law. So when we look at um, uh, Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to read um, a, a little bit long scripture here. Matthew 25, 31 to 40. He said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a sheep shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. 
Then the right, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and look, uh, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. This is the revelation here. Hallelujah. This is the revelation. So when you go on visitation, visiting the brethren, the Bible says that you are doing it for the Lord Jesus. You might think you are doing it for a friend or a brother in the church. No. Jesus said that you did it for me. So you minister to the Lord when you go on visitation. When somebody is hungry and you are feeding the person, you don't think that, oh, I'm, I'm giving the person food. So there are some people, when they are doing good, they even want it to be reciprocal that, oh, because I've done this for him, he also have to intend do some for me another time. You will lose your reward. The Bible says that that kind of um, act is a Pharisee type of righteousness. You give and don't expect anything. These are the people who took care of people, who fed people, who received strangers, who um, visited, did a lot of things, helping the poor. And that the Lord told them that they should come to the kingdom, but the kingdom has been prepared for them because they ministered to the Lord. Jesus said that all that you did for the brethren, you did it for me. Hallelujah. So one of the pictures that we have to understand that when we are doing anything, especially in the body of Christ or what God has ordained, let us know that we are not doing it for men, but we are doing it for the Lord. Hallelujah. When Paul was persecuting the church, when he was called Saul at that time, when he had an encounter with the Lord on the way, the Lord Jesus told him that he was persecuting him. He didn't say he's persecuting those brethren, the believers, and that time they were called the way. He said that you are not persecuting the way, but you are persecuting me. So anything that you do against God's children or the brethren, it is against the law. And when you minister to them, meet their needs, visit them, do go to them, you are not doing it for them, but you are doing it unto the law. So when it comes to ministering to the Lord, let us open our eyes. And let us nothing distract us. Sometimes self will make us think that, oh, if I do this, the person has to do this for me. There are people that they said they have done good and evil has been rewarded to them, so they will not even do good again. If they have knowledge that what they are doing is unto the law, they will not complain. I've seen somebody who said that um, he, 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 wants, he, he gives to men of God, bless them with coats, shoes, and other things, and then if maybe the man of God doesn't put on his shoe that time, he will not buy anything for him again. He knows that he's, he's in his mind, he knows that he's giving a gift to the man of God, but he doesn't know that he's giving it unto the Lord. That is why sometimes people receive some strange breakthroughs, some extraordinary breakthroughs, when they especially uh, um, give some services to men of God. God breaks through for them supernaturally. Because the Lord knows that what they are doing, they are not doing for other men, but they are doing for him. But God has ordained his servant. So the moment you begin to bless the servant of the Lord, serve the servant of the Lord out of your heart, do your best for him, God begins to open supernatural doors for you. Hallelujah. So ministering to the Lord is in diverse ways, not only in worship. Worship is part of it. Let us worship the Lord, minister to him in worship, in praise. When, when it comes to the physical, let's also do our best. Even if, it was, if it's unto men, but we are not doing unto, unto men in, in the actual fact, but it's unto the Lord. So let us see beyond men. Let us see beyond the brethren and do it to the glory of the Lord. So if it's, you are doing something in the house of the Lord, you are singing in the choir, you are in the usher department, you are in the prayer department, any department that you are in, especially when it comes to the body of Christ in the church, do it with your mind. Do it with all your heart, and the Lord will bless you. So finally, in conclusion, I will read the scripture that I mentioned before from Acts chapter 20, 35. He says that, 
I have showed you all things. How that so laboring you ought to support the weak. This is Paul, uh, this thing, uh, utterance. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. So in your services, in your ministry, it's a way of what? Giving. And as you give, you'll be more blessed rather than receiving. But when you expect somebody to serve you, you don't gain anything. Hallelujah. You will not gain anything. Just to sit down, you want to be a boss for other people to serve you. And some even pray that even in marriage, they'll have men who come and serve them. They will not receive any reward. Hallelujah. Because it is ordained that they give. And as it is being done, God blesses. Well, that is how God has ordained. So when a person is born again, for example, we are born or we are saved to serve. So when you enter the kingdom, it's all services. The same thing that when you look in the area of marriage, marriage is just a picture of the church. The same thing, but in another category. There's no difference. So service is required in every area. And as we give, the rewards that we are going to have will be tremendous. So as many that are serving faithfully in the church, in their marriages, in their areas, great shall be their reward. And they will be surprised with what God will give to them especially those who have never complained, those who don't complain here and there, but open their heart to do it. So let us open our hearts in the ministry work, anywhere that God is calling us to do anything, let us do it with all our heart, and God is going to bless us. For the word of God says that it is more blessing to give than to receive. Shall we bow down our heads and then we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for your word that has come. We pray and ask for grace ask for strength, that we'll be able to give our best, grant us the strength as Paul lived and did all that he could, giving and was able to stand and say that he has finished his course. Help us that we will not complain, we will not look unto men, or we will not look at other people, compare and then begin to murmur concerning our services that we give, or we will not let familiarity hinder us from offering the service that we have to offer to you. We pray, help us. When it comes to worship, help us to offer you the, the pure worship that is needed. When it comes to giving, help us to give the best that we can. When it comes to giving our time in our service in any area, even in the body of Christ or in the ministry work or whatever, help us to do it with all our might. Because great will be our reward when we see, because you said that the kingdom was... Um, designed or created for such who minister unto you. Help us to be able to minister unto you in every area of our life. In the ordinances that you have ordained, help us to serve you faithfully to the end. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.